tell us about your upcoming plans. Well, I plan to, um, I think we, the band are going to come to uh, play over here in major cities in uh, this country, hopefully in May. So, um, but before then I go to Chicago, Los Angeles and Washington and it's very cold in Chicago and I'm absolutely terrified. I mean, I don't dare walk out of the hotel now unless there's actually a car waiting outside that I can leap into. It terrifies me. But, um, you know, we plan to come back in uh, May and do some proper concerts. At the moment, it's just promotional stuff, just interviews and that sort of thing. Yeah, at, at home we're working on um, new material. We've got about five songs so far. And, uh, well, that's exciting. I mean, the thing I like most, I think, is writing songs. And saxophone player Stuart and myself, uh, any time we get free at all, we, we get down to doing that, really, because it's a thing we both really, really enjoy. It's just getting enough time for it, you know? <laughs> for some of the uh, biggest influences on your sound? Well, uh, I've grown up listening to Marvin Gaye and Bill Withers and Aretha Franklin and Nina Simone and Billie Holiday. Uh, so I suppose that's the biggest influence on me. It has to be, you know, it's the music I love. But I could go on forever. There's thousands of other people. So. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, starting out as a fashion designer and Mm -hmm. including maybe something about working with Spandau Ballet and how you made the transition to being a singer? Well, uh, Spandau um, isn't... Uh, working with Spandau was very much uh, just a, just something that happened. They, I was designing and, and they were friends of mine and uh, they were coming to New York and they wanted to do a show before they came on stage. I wasn't friendly with the whole band, I'm friendly with the manager and the guitarist and songwriter Gary Kemp. And uh, they just wanted to sort of keep it in the family, you know, keep bring friends over rather than uh, strangers. And they just brought a contingent of uh, um, designers with them, and we were included because basically we were friends and buddies, and we all went to the same clubs and that's and so on and so forth. So um, that's why I came over with them initially. But the way I got into singing was um, by chance. You know, somebody asked me to um, if I could sing. A friend of mine had a group and that had two backing vocalists. One of the singers left and they had a concert coming up and he asked me if I could sing, so I said, oh, we'll have, I'll attempt to. And so I auditioned for the band. They initially turned me down and then came crawling back to me. <laughs> when they couldn't find anybody better, they decided they came back. And so I humbly and modestly accepted the <laughs> position in the band. And uh, that's really how I started singing, just because just through a friend, really. Um, he wasn't an entrepreneurial sort of manager. It was his band he was managing, this group called Pride. He was just, he wasn't a big cigar, you know, entrepreneurial manager. He was just a friend of theirs and introduced me to them, really. That's how it all started. What, what do you enjoy doing outside of your music? Are you still doing fashion work? Or... Um, no, I'm not. I mean, the thing, my pastime, if you like, it, the thing I enjoy most and um, to find free time for, other than the usual things like meeting up with friends and eating, which is a great passion of mine, and, and going out and dancing. The, 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 the thing I enjoy most is actually writing songs, and that's my recreation. That's, that, that's the most important thing to me, really. Uh, being allowed to have some time to do that is uh, crucial. You know. That's my pastime. I don't know. It hasn't been tough anywhere, anywhere, everywhere so far that we've released the album. I mean, surprisingly enough, I mean, it, it, it was a surprise, although you want success and you crave and hope for it. I mean, everybody, I think every artist intends that one day that, that, that you know, they're striving for success. But, I mean, I was very surprised at, at how it was received everywhere in Europe. Everywhere it's been released so far, it's been received um, very quickly and spontaneously. So. I mean, I, I don't see why it should be any different in America. Possibly it will be, but um, I hope it won't be too hard, you know? <laughs> Have you set goals for yourself for this year? Has the band got a goal? The, we've got our goal is basically to to get better, to keep our sound, but, you know, improve. I mean, we've got a long way uh, that we can go. I think that we've done a lot, making Diamond Life, we've done a lot for a first album, but. Uh, there's, we all still think, and especially me for myself and the pressures that I put on myself to improve that, you know, we have a long way to go and really it's to make a, a, a greater album, you know, than Time of Life and 
stick together as friends and enjoy it, keep enjoying it. I mean, that is, you know, fundamental importance that we carry on enjoying each other, other's company, and I think that's the only way we can really make good albums anyway. But it's just to, to stretch a bit and, and, and expand and get better with what we've got, but get better, basically. What did you think of the idea of the basement tapes? Um, well, I mean, I don't really like directing other people's uh, uh, careers, basically. I'm, it's hard enough to direct your own. Me sitting there with my pencil saying, yes, this is OK, this isn't. But uh, some, of it, some of it was awful and some of it was very good, you know. I don't know how much it's got to do with how, how much money is available uh, to do it. I mean, that must be something to do with it, um, you know, to do with the end result. Because basically, on the whole, with videos, you can only do a good video, a video if you have a certain amount of... Uh, if you have access to a certain amount of money. So I don't know how fair it is, but I hope I was fair. You know, I don't like deciding other people's future, <laughs> particularly. I'm not good at it. What did you judge people by? criteria? Well, I think this initially, you know, the song and the performance, because however good or bad a video is, the, the person can perform and put as much in as uh, they, you know, as they're capable of. So I suppose that... The most important thing is the music first, always, and then the performance, and then the video is almost less important because of all the things that go behind making a video, you don't really know what the background is, so they can't judge too harshly on that. People are probably curious what the origin of your name is. Shade. Uh, well, it comes from Nigeria, and my father's Nigerian and my mother's English. Uh, but it was, I was christened Helen Bolashade, and uh, the Nigerians wouldn't call me by an English name because of the Nigerian pride. So I've always been Shade, which is an abbreviation of Bolashade, which is the full name. Mm. That's the thing, just a fantasy question. If you could do anything, absolutely anything. Mm. Well, I, I'm a shoe fetishist, and uh, <laughs> why, uh, somebody asked me this before, and, and I've thought, since thought about it, and uh, my dream is uh, one thing I quite like to be as a baby again. You know, sitting in a pram. I mean, I'm sure I would get. I, I need an analyst or something like that, but I won't have one. But I, I'd like to be a baby in a pram, being pushed around a nice, warm um, shopping centre full of shoes, and I'd be on the right level, <laughs> maybe listening to Marvin Gaye or something coming through the sound system. That's my ultimate fantasy. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe. I think I've maybe got problems. Well, how about just briefly what success for your fairly new and very mm. uh, Well, because I'm running around all the time, I haven't really got time to be reflective. I haven't got time to stop much and think, has it changed? I mean, obviously, places where the band have been successful, it's difficult to just, you know, wander around the streets and do normal things. I mean, it's practically impossible without having interruptions all the time. So, you know, you can't sort of get lost in your thoughts and go for a walk and think and look and that because you're going to constantly be interrupted. But it isn't something that I wasn't trying to prepare myself for. You'd never be fully prepared for it and, until it's a reality. But. Um, you know, I've, I've tried my best to become accustomed to it, but, you know, you're aware of it, nevertheless. But um, I think that's the only sort of difficult thing to cope with, is, is the way that strangers react to you, you know. You, it's not so easy to make new friends. I, I mean, it doesn't matter, I'll always have my old friends. And, but it is very, it's a little bit more difficult to make friends because people are always more aware of you than they would otherwise be if they'd never heard of you. So I've, I've not got any problems in America so far because we only just started here, so I'm quite enjoying it anyway. Well, good luck to you. Thanks a lot. Thanks.